Yeah. Well, speaking of vandalising art, the relentless eco-protests causing chaos across the capital arrived at the National Gallery today. <laughs> Pathetic, isn't it? Two Just Stop <laughs> Oil activists threw cans of tomato soup at Van Gogh's £70 million masterpiece Sunflowers and then superglued themselves to the wall. Shocked witnesses called security before police arrested them for criminal damage and aggravated trespass. The painting is now back on display. Elsewhere, fellow protesters marched on Scotland Yard, spraying the iconic revolving sign with orange paint, prompting a further 24 arrests. I mean, frankly, if they want to pour orange paint over the sign to uh, Scotland Yard, I don't have much problem with that. I mean, they're <coughs> trying to make their point. I don't really care about their point, but they've got a right to protest. But I find infantile vandalising of works of great beauty, masterpieces like this. Only recently they attacked the Mona Lisa as well. Do you remember the Taliban destroying those fantastic mm. sculptures? Yeah. You just uh, said it would make a great sculpt TV programme. Huh? <laughs> if Jimmy Carr was doing it, you'd have a problem. It's not a TV <laughs> show, it's not a TV programme. I didn't say let's go and film them and turn it. I, 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 think, I, think, Poland, I, think, I think that these people, I think this is, this is uh, infantile vandalism you're and right. these people should be sent you're, to jail. You're for life. You're absolutely right, but they didn't actually damage anything, did they? Right. They poured some soup on a plastic box. The painting was not destroyed. In that museum, they, there's plenty of paintings that aren't covered in boxes, mm. and they could have gone and grimmed themselves. So they could have cut things up. They didn't. <gasps> They've done it to make a statement. Uh, they, they've caused a bit of what dirt, a bit, of, a bit of soup, maybe some stickiness to the, to Look the glass. At them. Look but at apart, them. Aside from that, nothing else. Soulless and philistines. That's experimental what they are. Van Gogh <laughs> oh actually would God. probably look at this and think, "Yeah, you guys are doing a good They've job." They've got no soul, these people. Could They're philistines. Just gone along it's and a disgusting some, thing to do. Tomato soup over them. Yeah, they like it. <laughs> yeah, that's what I would do. You know, all, that's all that's going to end up happening is they're going to have to make security tighter and ban people from taking in uh, food and liquids yeah. uh, in, into these museums if, yeah. if it continues. Well, yeah. it's yeah. obviously going to continue until the end of the school holidays, which is as, as the same as it is every other time when they yeah. they'll be back at um, you know at Christmas or half term, uh, you know, in, you know the next half term, and then back again at Easter. Shall I do that you line know. that I always do, yeah, where yeah. I say, "Why don't they? Do, they should take us all with them." Yeah. <laughs> and then, and then, but you know what I'm going to say, which is that you've got to have people on your side, and this, unfortunately, yeah. alien. It generally it's tends been, to alienate yeah. people because it looks charming. Well, you say and that, Penny, but hasn't... actually, all oil has now stopped being used. That demonstration was entirely <laughs> successful. It's pathetic. No it's, one will pay you know any what? attention. We spoke yesterday on the show about people stop disrupting ambulances from being able to get to mm. hospital. That I disagree with. This is my kind of activism. Yeah. Nobody was harmed. They threw soup at a piece of glass. Yeah. They glued them. So okay, they super glued themselves that must have been an inconvenience and maybe for the cleaner it's disrespectful however they've got our attention they did it in front of a van gogh i'm sure that many children across the country go oh never heard about that but painting you know what? before but the yeah. thing is though one i I very Education. much doubt that they're smart enough to know that it was covered in some kind of... Uh, of course you know. they knew. No, of course they didn't know. These people are idiots, right? Um, <laughs> the bottom line is they keep going on and on about the suffragettes and going, you know, it shows you that direct action works and you would have said the same about the suffragettes. First of all, no, because if we were arguing about the same two, two things, you'd be saying, you know, just stop getting oil out of the ground when you weren't getting it out of the ground. The fact is we've got oil yeah. and you don't stop something uh, that's already been going on for years and years and years and years. And also, um, <laughs> there has never been a successful campaign of proper... Uh, civil disobedience. Look at the Green and Common women. You know, they were trying to stop nuclear mm. weapons. Putin's still got loads of them. So, you know, there's no actual record of any success since the suffragettes, which is a bloody well, long time ago. because I support the cause, I think it's worth mentioning because we're talking about, you know, the morality of it. I also want to talk about why they are doing it and what they're protesting about. People from underdeveloped countries around the world are facing the effects of climate change largely caused by developed countries. We're seeing... That's not true. In your, in your view. In, in, your in view. my opinion, in your if view. you let me speak it, I will finish it. Yeah, but don't say it as a fact. In my opinion, <laughs> right. in my opinion, and Thank many, you. many scientists' opinion, across the globe, climate <laughs> change is real and is happening. And swathes of people in underdeveloped countries, and I, I hate that description, but that's how it's known, um, third world countries across the planet are being moved 
en masse because it is too hot, because there are floods and because there is famine in the area. And mm -hmm. we sit here and, and go, hey, it's just a little bit warmer in winter. Who can mm -hmm. complain? I think it's important <coughs> to note that, even if Kevin doesn't agree it's with it. It's about let's whether you actually let the door entirely of oil or whether you just let the door of other things. And the nobody's doubting that there is climate change. It's about the cause, right? The cause is largely driven, actually, not by the West, but by developing countries like China and like India. India, uh, who have massively industrialised over the last 20 to 30 years. Just like we did. In, in, yeah, but in India, there's many more people than there yeah. are in the West. And in China, there's many more people than there are. More yeah. people have got cars, more people have got electric uh, devices, more yeah. people have and got And deforestation bridges, in more Brazil. More people have got uh, 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 air conditioning Still machines. Still as many per people and, as us. Yeah, but the point is, is that, you know, it's wrong to blame the West. And it's the narrative it's that comes from the left that it's all our fault and we should all be I really sorry. I didn't say strong. the West. Well, you did. I said uh, you said, develop, you said developed. developed countries. Well, you, I presume you would call <coughs> India a developing country, wouldn't you? And China is a developing country, even though it's very powerful. There's a lot of very poor people there. But their lives need to be improved, and it's improved by petrol and oil and everything that it makes. Yeah. And it might be wrong, it might be wrong to, uh, to uh, blame uh, humanity at all for any of this. Oh, the jury gosh. Well, oh, no. there are many oh, scientists. No. There are very few. There are no, many. I think please, there are Kevin, just go to break, <laughs> That please. isn't true. Coming... <laughs>